This right here, for me, is the best footwear out there for hiking and backpacking. Are you looking for a super comfortable shoe with really good grip that's gonna help keep your feet from getting tired on long days on trail? The Hoka Speedgoat 5 Trail Runner builds on the already amazing Hoka Speedgoat 4 to tick all of those boxes. But there are some changes that Hoka made to the Speedgoat 5 that I'm not thrilled about. But before we get into those, let's talk about all the good things about this shoe. Starting with the outsole, we have Vibra Mega Grip here. Vibra Mega Grip is by far the best outsole material that I've ever used. It gives you great grip on slick or wet rocks, wood, ground. It's just all around a really sticky and grippy outsole. To top it all off, it's also super durable. Vibra Mega Grip, just all around amazing. The lug pattern that Hoka uses on the Speedgoat 5 is amazing. I found it gives me really good grip on soft or muddy ground. It also sheds mud very easily so you don't have mud building up and sticking to the bottom of the shoe. Something that Hoka updated with the Speedgoat 5 versus the Speedgoat 4 is they added these little mini spikes on all of the lugs which is supposed to help with traction. It's meant to add a little bit of surface area when getting grip but I haven't really noticed a difference. Moving on up to the midsole, this is really where the magic happens. We have a really thick midsole with 33 millimeters of stack height in the heel and then 29 millimeters in the forefoot giving you a four millimeter drop. Hoka says they have a redesigned EVA foam for the midsole of the Hoka Speedgoat 5s versus the Speedgoat 4s, but I haven't really noticed a difference compared to the Speedgoat 4s with the over 100 miles that I have on the Speedgoat 5s so far. Something that I hope the new midsole addresses is durability and compression. I got about four to 500 kilometers out of three pairs of Speedgoat 4s, but I'd love to be able to get 500 plus kilometers out of Speedgoat 5s, and hopefully the midsole helps with that. The new foam on the Speedgoat 5s is still nice and cushy. It really helps with foot fatigue. My feet don't get tired at all, even during really long 40, 50, 60 kilometer days on trail. The thick cushion on the Speedgoat 5s is really gonna help as you're walking over uneven ground from preventing your foot from contorting and then getting really tired over the course of the day. You get all those benefits of the cushion with the Speedgoat 5s while still maintaining good connection to the trail when you're out there. I just wanted to throw that in there for those of you who might think that this tall stack head would make the shoe a little bit tipsy. If you've used the Speedgoat 4s before and really like the midsole and the cushion that it provides, you're gonna love the Speedgoat 5s just as much. The upper of the Speedgoat 5s is where you get a whole bunch of changes compared to the Speedgoat 4s. You have an engineered mesh with almost no overlays other than a little toe cap at the front here. I found the volume of the upper to be pretty much consistent with the Speedgoat 4s. The size 10.5 fits my foot really well. I have a pretty narrow heel and then average to wide midfoot and forefoot and I didn't need to go up to the wide width. Part of the reason for that is this new upper material. It's slightly stretchier than the Speedgoat 4s, which allows your foot to spread out a little bit more in the shoe. With the Speedgoat 4s, I found that I had to wear the shoes in a little bit. My pinky toe would kind of press out on the forefoot. I didn't have that problem with the Speedgoat 5s. My foot was really comfortable right out of the box. You may think that lack of overlays on the Speedgoat 5 upper is gonna to lead to some durability issues, but I found that those overlays on the Speedgoat 4 would just delaminate and peel off anyways, and they weren't providing that much protection. The engineered mesh of the Speedgoat 5s is also a lot more breathable than the material the Speedgoat 4s were made out of. I found my foot never gets hot in the shoe, even when I'm out in the desert in really hot temperatures. The upper also dries really quickly. I've taken it on some trips where my foot has been wet from walking through streams and water, and then once I got to camp, the shoe would dry really quickly. Here's a pro tip, if your shoe does get wet, and you want it to dry out, take out the insole from the shoe, your shoe's gonna dry a whole lot faster. Before we get into the negatives with the shoe, it weighs 10.5 ounces for the men's size nine, that's the advertised weight from Hoka. That is extremely light for a shoe with as much cushion and durability as the Hoka Speedgoat 5s. The price of the Speedgoat 5s is kind of a neutral matter, it costs $155 US for the shoe, which is kind of in the middle ground as far as trail runners, especially technical trail runners like the Speedgoat 5 goes. If you're interested in picking up the shoe, check out the link in the video description. I get a small commission from any purchases that you make at that store. I know it's cost you, but it really helps out the channel. Moving on to what's bad about the shoe, there's not a whole lot here, but there are some nitpicky things that I think could use improvement. First of all, Hoka redesigned the tongue to make it a little bit more ergonomic, but I find with the redesigned tongue, it's a little bit harder to put the shoe on without this tongue getting sucked down the shoe. Once they have the shoe on and tied up, the tongue stays put really nicely, but just makes putting on the shoe a little bit harder. There's a couple issues with the new upper that I found so far. The first one being that because it's a stretcher material, it doesn't hold as well on technical ground. I find that the upper is just a little bit more sloppy than the Speedgoat 4. The other issue with the upper comes as a trade-off with breathability, and that's if you're walking through areas with really fine sand 
or soil material, that's gonna get right in the shoe. I was walking through the desert and it just, my shoe just filled up with sand really quickly. It wasn't a huge deal, but a little bit annoying and something that I'm gonna consider if I am doing another desert trip. You may have noticed the heel swoop on the Speedgoat 5s. This is meant to make it easier to put the shoe on as well as take it off. It gives you a little bit of a pull tab and then also acts as a shoehorn for sliding your heel into the shoe. But there's one issue that I have with this and that's that acts as a little bit of a funnel for tiny stones and rocks. Hasn't been a huge issue, but there's been a couple times where I've got a little stone that works its way down my heel and I'm pretty sure it's because it got caught on this little flap here. A factor that's too soon to tell but that I'm watching is durability of the upper. With this new engineered mesh, it has the potential to be less durable than the material the Speedgoat 4s are made of, but like I said, I've used it for over 100 miles and I haven't really noticed any areas that are starting to wear out prematurely, which leads me to think that overall the upper is gonna be very durable and it's not gonna fail before the midsole compresses out and I'm gonna have to replace it because of the midsole compression. Go check out this video if you wanna see my favorite gear from 2021, which includes the Speedgoat 4s. I'm optimistic that the Speedgoat 5s are also gonna be one of my favorite pieces of gear, but if you like the Speedgoats, you'll probably love a bunch of the gear that I talked about in that video.